Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another painting tutorial. This time it's going to be on a Necron Warrior. But this video is going to be slightly different. I'm going to use this to challenge your fears in the hobby. And by that I mean, how many times have you looked at something in a codex or a white dwarf or online and said to yourself, there is no way that I can achieve that? I know I have a lot. So what I did is I went back to the earliest time that I can remember having that feeling. And that brought me back to this. The first 40K codex that I, I think I properly owned was this. This is the third and fourth edition Necron codex. I bought it in 2001, I was 13 years of age. Um, and Necrons was my first official 40K army. I love these guys a lot. Collected many points of them, painted them terribly, of course. Um, but it was it was good times all around. In this book, there is a specific scheme that I will get to in this video that I just couldn't fathom back in the day being able to do. So what I want to do now is, does the um, e equipment and paints and tools and things that we have access to today mitigate those kind of difficulties? I believe it does on most uh, occasions. So. I'm going to put it to the test and I'm going to paint up that scheme or a scheme very like it um, using everything I have at my uh, disposal and to try and do it without pulling my hair out. You know what I mean. So stick around guys and enjoy the video. To this day this codex still has a very special place in my heart and I think it will do till the day that I pass from this world. It was my first 40k codex that I've ever bought. I still have such fond memories of pouring over, reading every section over and over again. It still has the best piece of artwork ever done for 40K, which is this, absolutely incredible. And a certain charm to these kind of codexes that I think is kind of missing these days, um, color schemes and making your own scenery and those kind of bits and pieces. So these were the standard color schemes that they suggested, the metallics. They gave you a bunch of different options. These were all kind of relatively easy to do. And then there was this special section called ceramics and it showed what kind of futuristic necrons could look like and these are the ones that i was speaking about where when i looked at these back in kind of end of third edition start of fourth edition and saw the range of 50 citadel paints that we used to have back then the only thing we had was skull white to try and do anything like that it was just an impossible feat can we now today the kind of paints and equipment we have do it but much easier so so black gray is going to be my first port of call i'm doing this over a gray sear base coat and let's get into it let's see what we can do so the so black gray is a paint um from the new shade range that came out with the new contrast range there a couple of weeks ago i have yet to have a proper play around with it i believe this paint has um some real crazy potential i don't think this is the, the last video you are going to see me playing around with it and um, I may even try to attempt to do a Primaris White Scar miniature using this. I've got I've got some ideas, but it's it's definitely a very interesting color, and that I don't think enough people are talking about just yet. So I gave the entire miniature a nice coat of this new gray shade. Thought it was a contrast when it first came out, but nope, new shade. Waited for it all to dry like this, and as you can see, it's already a beautiful color. Next, we're going to move over to a dark silver. I went for iron hand steel, and I'm going to paint all of the bits in between the bits that would be ceramic, in my opinion. So all of the joints, ankle joints, the pistons that run up some of the legs, the entire like spinal column bit. And I'm just going to leave all of the kind of big paneled parts of this Necron with the, uh, the new gray shade paint. This is a piece that I've got to be a little bit careful with. I don't want any of the silver on these white panels. I will be doing some layering on the white panels later, but still it's going to be hard to cover over metallics with these bright colors that we're going to be using. So once we have uh, the metallics in all the right spots, it should look something like that. Next, we're going to move over to the new Nolan Oil Shade, which is a much thinner version than the old Nolan Oil Shade. Still not particularly happy about this, but for steps like this where I am trying to just add a little bit of shade to a kind of white miniature, I don't want to completely overpower the white paint and then it works out kind of well for that kind of thing. So a quick uh, coat of the new Nolan Oil Shade across uh, the entire miniature just to get our base coat down and to protect the paint. And then after that, then we'll start the layering process. 
already I'm super excited with how this is going to turn out. 13 year old me will be quite pleased with the result. Um, at least I hope you will anyway. We shall see. Okay guys, we're at the halfway stage of painting of this miniature. It's definitely in its ugly stage. Um, every miniature goes through the iteration of uh, having its ugly stage where you just want to throw the model across the room or throw it in a drawer or a case and forget about it. It's another challenge guys, don't do it. Follow through, get the model done and I'm, I'm telling you, you'll be shocked by the results. Um, I would just like to ask you guys uh, once again to make sure that you like the video if you're enjoying yourself. If you have not already hit that subscribe button, it will be super helpful for me, the growth of my channel, and me being able to do this full time for the rest of time. Um, if you would hit that subscribe button and join in with the, uh, the Media Hobbies family. If you have any questions about anything I'm doing in this video or any other video, drop in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. Thank you guys so much for all the support you have been doing up until now. And let's finish off this next one. Okay, now that the, the miniature has uh, dried and I've also used the opportunity to base the miniature. I always like working halfway through the paint job towards the end with the miniature already based because I feel like we're really breaking the back of the project of the model or whatever. So I went for the base paint Celestra Grey. Back when these models were in codex or these color schemes were in codexes, they didn't have base paints. We didn't have foundation paints yet. We didn't have any of that. So it was really thin watery layer paints that we were trying to get these bright vibrant schemes with and it was just a disaster. Now with the help of beautiful paints like base paints, much hair, stronger in pigment, a little bit thicker, means that in two thin coats, you're going to get a really crisp, clean coat of Celestra Grey. All I had to do was be careful not to fill in any of the recesses or creases left behind by the shade. I do want this model to be quite well defined. I don't want it to look like it was painted with Tipex, um, all gloopy filled in or, or rough or clump. I just, yeah, I want a nice smooth, like the word ceramic means ceramic. It is a, you know, a produced thing. It's supposed to be kind of really smooth. After the two coats, this is what I was left with. And as an armor color, I thought this was super cool. Um, part of me was screaming out to add some uh, weathering powder to like the feet and stuff, but I decided not to because that's not everyone's cup of tea. I used the Pro Acrylic Titanium White, which is a beautiful color. And I'm using this to paint in anything that I'm gonna make it be uh, like that glowy green effect, something that I'm gonna hit with Warp Lightning later down the road. So he's gonna have glowing green eyes, the coils of his uh, Gauss rifle, and then the the entire like energy tube of the Gauss rifle as well, I'm gonna hit with that. So with the entire tube, I'm just going into all the recesses and stuff because I want them to be the brightest when I apply the, so like that's where the green glow is emanating from. The rest of the tube is still gonna be green, but those big coils are gonna be what screams out the most kind of green energy. And I think that's gonna look really cool. Runefang steel was used to highlight uh, very quickly all of those metallic inner working pieces. Very quick stage. Once again, like the, the ceramic -y parts, we're not trying to fill in all the recesses. We're just going for the raised bits. Just add a little highlight. And from there, all we're going to do uh, for the final part of painting up this miniature is, like I said, the Warp Lightning Contrast Paint. Take a blob of it, drop it into each eye socket, and then up those uh, glowing parts on the Gauss Rifle. As you can see, two quick dots, and we've already got these immense looking green glowing eyes. Super fast, super, like, people would look at this and think that you put a lot of effort in. A dot of titanium white and a warp lightning contrast drawn over the top, literally it. The coils, once again, I hit down a bit of titanium white as well, just across the, the middle bits, um, just to make those center bits glow a little bit brighter than the edges, which I think stood out when I applied the warp lightning. At least I think I can see the difference. <laughs> and then up and down the entire coil of the Gauss rifle, we are going to hit with a nice thick coat of Warp Lightning. As you can see, those balls in the uh, middle section are already popping out brighter than the tube itself, which is exactly what I wanted to happen. And with that, we have our completed Necron Warrior in ceramic armor. Absolutely delighted that after Oh God, like 20 years of waiting, I finally got up the courage to smash out this paint scheme. It's one of those 
kind of inner monologue things where I can just tick the box. It's done. Delighted. I know everybody out there has a similar um, paint scheme that they're afraid of. I challenge you guys to go out and give it a bash yourselves. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next video.